If I think about change agents and change levers of this particular world, how would I change a company? Yeah. Um, traditional levers of change, we said, like if we have the right people, if they have the right structures, if we have the right strategy, we have the right processes, and all of those things are important over there. But the real catalyst today that we have changed, which absolutely forces companies to change, you don't have a choice, is technology. Once technology comes in, everything changes. Companies on their own will are not going to change. I mean, they are successful companies who have customers. They do extremely well. They have stakeholders. They have a certain mission to fulfill. And for them to transform themselves is extremely hard. Technology provides that particular push. All of a sudden, when they encounter disruptive forces, new digital forces, new technology over there, they don't have a choice. But once they make up their minds and they understand that this is the forces that they need to live with, all of a sudden their, their, their companies take on a totally new form. So technology is so important over there because this is the driving force. It will affect everything. As somebody said, look, if it can be digitized, it will be digitized. And once it's digitized, it will be commoditized. And so if that's the world that we're going to be living in over there, we better learn how to cope with that particular world. And the other reason why companies should pay attention, because if they are too late, it'll be really late. They will not be able to survive. And we have examples and examples of companies. And that's what the industries are learning with. Even if it's something is not at your doorstep today, it'll arrive. The technology revolution is here. The people are changing. The next generation is learning differently. They're growing up differently. They don't have space for analog things. We used to think paper. There is no paper anymore. We write on digital things, we read digital stuff, everything is becoming digital over there. How do you cope with that particular world? And I think we are really at the cusp. We still have to grasp the full import of what the digital revolution is all about. Um, I, I think we are at very, very early stages. We say the world is an interconnected uh, village right now. It's all interconnected, but we don't know how interconnectedness works. We talk of things like networks. I think we are really almost just about starting to understand how networks behave over there. So it's such a radical new transformation and people running companies today do not understand it as well and the changing, and because technology is always ahead. Technology moves much faster than the needs. So we better try and understand that phenomena. Five years from now, the world is gonna be very different. Therefore, you adopt this particular driving force and this catalyst and lever of change in your own particular companies. I think the future that we are headed today towards is one in which networks are going to be predominant, networks are going to be dominating, and we need to understand the dynamics of networks. Yeah. I was reading something fascinating which says, um, as cities become larger, do they become more innovative or do they become less? It says when cities become larger, in that particular case, there are more innovation, there's more creativity. But companies are the other way around. Companies, when they become larger over there, they become inflexible, they become slower, they become lethargic. What's the difference? Because cities are like networks. It's about connectedness. Everything, it's about social uh, elements. And we're just about starting to learn right now how, what, what are network dynamics? How do networks operate over there? Imagine, how do you manage a company like a network? so that you're gonna be big, you're gonna be large, you're still gonna be flexible, you have all the creativity in the world. So these are things which I think are extremely important. We are right at the beginning of this particular phenomena. Sometimes we look at phenomena like Facebook and say one billion users over there, and I think we have reached the cusp of that particular growth. Hardly, we are just at the beginning of that particular revolution. Take other technologies coming out into the future, very simple things. You know, one of the things which is fascinating to me is 3D printing. All of a sudden, I'm gonna be having a printer in my particular home and I can do whatever I want with that particular thing. Have we even imagined the possibilities of what we can do with it? We can actually make, I mean, what will happen to the model of mass manufacturing and mass production? Maybe we don't need it anymore. All of a sudden, everything I can do, I can manufacture all those particular things ourselves over there. And it's a very different world that we're gonna be living in. So there are so many things which are going to be happening over there in the future. Uh, just digital literacy. All our people who are going up over there are growing up in a digital world in which there is more and more and more information available. Today we think about marketing research. I don't have to do any research. All I have to do is to filter. I just have to find out what's available over there, filter it. It's about analytics. 
And we are beginning at that particular phenomena as we move forward over there. And those are extremely exciting prospects in a few and a couple of different ways because we don't understand the dynamics of connectivity. We don't understand the dynamic. I mean, how do you balance connectedness with people living by themselves, producing the things that they want to do, you know, doing their own particular printing, yet at the same time being a part of a larger community? I think it's a whole new world that we're going to be operating towards. And that's fascinating to learn. The other aspect is, which particular field can teach us all these things? And we are just learning, maybe we only have to look at ourselves. We have to look at humanity, about living organisms. Maybe the way living organisms have evolved is the way in which technology will be evolving. Then when we talk networks, I mean, humankind is all about networks. It's biology, it's about ant colonies, it's about everything else. Can we learn from biology? Can we learn from physics? So can we learn from these particular mathematical sciences about how we want to operate in this new particular world? All of a sudden, all the knowledge we learn is starting to become relevant because the world is changing so much. And that new world that we are evolving to is going to be so interdisciplinary. And that's the exciting part. That's, I think, where we are headed to. One, one thought I, want to, I do want to share, I want to leave uh, you with this. Uh, you know, in technology company, we often have people called evangelists. I mean, these guys are evangelizing about the future. They have a future vision. I think every company should have an evangelist for themselves. They say, this is where we are headed. This is the new world order in which we want to operate. And this is the role that we want to play. Much of that evangelism is going to be looking at all the new drivers and forces and defining a new future for that particular company. And I bet you a very large part of that particular future is going to be digital in nature, how technology is going to be leveraged by each and every company towards to move towards this particular environment over there. So I'd like every company to think more deeply about this particular future as opposed to only focus on the current needs, the current requirements and the current customers over there. And only then they're going to be relevant. Otherwise, the time span and the lifespan of companies we know is shortening over there. It will further start to accelerate and shorten. And I think it's time we did some serious long-term thinking and developing some strategies for a future, which we know is going to be there. It's not a question of if, it's a matter of when. Let's think about it today and uh, adapt and make all the changes necessary, including all the technology things that we need to do. Maybe we should call that particular position CEO, where the E stands for Chief and Evangelizing Officer. Maybe that's the right vision and that's the right title of what the CEO ought to be doing for the future, which is evangelizing, crafting a new future, setting a new vision over there and allowing the corporation to dream for the future and where it's headed over there. And maybe that will what make our company so exciting, so wonderfully uh, innovative over there. And we'll be positioning ourselves for a new world. So CEO, Chief Evangelizing Officer.